Thursday, January 14, 2016. It's going to Senior Services Council on Aging Board Meeting. Uh, public session. I don't see any members of the public. So we'll go right to approval of the minutes from the December 10th meeting. Someone wants to make a motion? Barbara? I'll second. Jim? Are uh, there any changes, questions, additions you want to make? Anyone? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? It's passed. Staff report. Michelle. I don't see Michelle. So we'll hold up the staff report for a few minutes or you schedule. Okay. So I actually have like two announcements. Okay. So one of the announcements, we have two new board members, and I'm sure you see some new faces or faces that haven't been at the table. We have Melissa Einberg, who is over here, and um, Jerry Ann Butler. And we can pull another chair over here, Lorraine, so you can sit up here. Right here. You have to speak, so why don't I sit here? Okay. Can you speak up there? Sure. So that's what saying. Yes. Uh, so also, Melissa, could you give us a small background synopsis on yourself? Sure. Um, I've lived here about uh, going on two years um, from uh, New York and Boston. I've worked in both places. Okay. Um, my background is I was a former photojournalist for the Associated Press, and now I'm a financial advisor. I've been doing that for about eight years. Good. And I like the Panama Valley. It's Very good. Right in between. So good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Jerry Ann. And I'm Jerry Ann Butler, and I live in Florence. And um, I've lived in Northampton since 1981. Um, I recently, in April, retired from the Mass Commission for the Blind. And I was very much associated with the Council on Aging during that position. I helped um, start the vision support group that meets here monthly in the good weather. <laughs> and uh, currently have been doing medical transportation and uh, benefits counseling, so I'm, I'm dug in here. <laughs> well, welcome to our little group. Should we go over and introduce ourselves? Yeah, sure. Sure. yeah. and you know what we'll do next time? Um, we have those in okay. black hurts for everybody, so we can put those out for a while so mm -hmm. everyone identifies who the other person has. Mm -hmm. uh, we start with this. Kathy Service? John Mary Lestowski. Myra Sal. Maureen Sikowitz. Jim Spencer. Lorraine Wyman. Barbara Fungaroli. Lisa Dunn. And I'm Bob Montague, Chair. Okay, uh, you have another announcement then? Yes, the other announcement I wanted to make was that um, Crystal Cody Stowe's will be leaving the senior center. No, oh, no, 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 no. So we don't have to hear it. No, no, no. 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 All in favor of not hearing it? Yeah. <laughs> no. It is good. No. It's good news for her. It's bad news for us. It's bad news for us. Um, wonderful news for Crystal and her family. Uh, Crystal will be taking a position at Lathrop Home over on South Street as the executive director. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Oh. And she will be um, leaving, her last day here will be February 5th. Mm -hmm. So we um, will truly miss her. She was an asset to this department and we all love working with her. And we'll continue to until February 5th. Yeah. So we're, we're very very excited. Yeah. 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 Oh, she's got to move to North Carolina. Yeah, I am. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh uh, yeah. Yeah. we can't have any foreigners here. No, no, no. 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 Uh, I'm going to look that up on the <laughs> end. <ethics. laughs> <laughs> anyway. We'll get into the oh. Yeah, so I am going to announce that on Tuesday, February 2nd, from 2 to 3, we are going to have a send off for Crystal. And, um, it's unfortunate we can't keep it a secret, but for Crystal, so she knows about it because one, we want to make sure that you know she's going to still be here that day, meaning not somewhere with an appointment or whatever. But also, we want to put it in the Con Street Chronicle so as many people know about it as possible. So we would love it. February second, so Tuesday, two to three. What's the date? Tuesday. Tuesday. We're going to have it in the back room and we'll have refreshments. And um, yeah, so 
that's what's happening. So the. Uh, and I've got one announcement I want to make. Uh, uh, Mayor Narkowitz has sent Walter Bach, one of our members, a letter regarding uh, his reappointment to the board, and he's not going to reappoint him. Oh. Primarily because he has not made many meetings of late. And so uh, due to his absence, the mayor has, on December 14th, he wrote him a letter saying he will not reappoint him. So Walter is off our board. Well, we do thank him for what he had done in his service yes. as the, a, a board member. Yeah, it was nice having a lawyer's uh, you know, yeah. input once in a while, but we didn't get the input often enough, unfortunately. And I do encourage everybody to make the meetings as much as you possibly can, unless you go to Argentina, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Which may or may not happen. Anyway, uh, let's get back to the staff report. Michelle? Hi, I'm Michelle Zolder, the social worker. Um, busy time of year for um, we talk about um, the possible um, assistance for fuel. Um, right now, there um, is the um, community action fuel assistance is um, going on, and that will um, go on all winter until May. We also have, um, which I help, um, I take appointments for seniors 60 and older for all of these programs that live in Northampton, Florence, or Leeds. Um, we have the Good Neighbor Energy Fund, and that's through the Salvation Army in coordination with um, several energy companies. And that is a little higher income. So people that um, don't normally qualify for the community action fuel assistance um, can qualify for um, the Good Neighbor. Um, the first um, household size for one would be the minimum, the maximum of 44000 168 um, a year, and that is a little over 10,000, about 12,000 more than <coughs> the community action for, for one family of one. So it does help. And then we have um, Joe for Oil, which I'll be calling for people, um, which is not open yet. I actually called their corporate office and have a contact there now. Um, in previous years, I've called and I've not been able to get through. So I've made a contact with the corporate office and they are not giving out um, applications quite yet. So I have to keep calling throughout January. And <laughs> once they open, they call me call and I get the application. Um, I'll help seniors with that. Then they send a, um, a voucher to their home for 100 gallons. There's no income guideline for that. Uh, they do ask for some information but um, I'm told that pretty much anyone that you know needs it they, and applies will will be able to get it while fun, funds are available. Yeah, like, is it just for oil? Though? It's just for oil. Yes, just for oil. So people that burn wood and things like that won't be able to get that. Um, but we do have our um, emergency um, one-time emergency with the Interfaith Help Funds. They help. Um, with shut off notices, things like that. They're here on Tuesdays, and um, they, they've been very helpful. And that's for anyone in Hampshire County, no matter how old they are. It's not an age requirement. Um, the requirement is it's a one time emergency assistance, and they'll have to have to bring in a shut off notice or um, you know, an eviction notice, something like that. Can I just say, so Interfaith Health Fund, we provide space for them? Yes. <clears throat> to have various um, clients come in to uh, request if they have an emergency to get some funding from them. So we're glad to be able to provide space and we've been doing that for a number of years. And as Michelle said that it is um, for people from Hampshire County, not just Northampton and not just seniors, but it's uh, there are a lot of people that come in for that assistance. Yeah, and we, and we also um, do the Salvation Army voucher for emergency assistance and that has been slow just because um, people are used to going to an office for um, Salvation Army so some people are still looking for the office and it's different community partners even though we advertise now they have brochures out um, so I always try to mention that when clients come in and Crystal does too um, and we have it in our, in our um, television sorry <laughs> Country Chronicles, so 
um, that's a big help. So that's also an emergency. Um, we just got done with um, open enrollment for Shine Medicare. Very busy um, time of year. We I um, had about 56 clients um, come in for open enrollment. So. Um, it's been busy. Some people don't always change, but it's their time to check on their Medicare and see if they have the best possible plan, if it's affordable, if it's covering what they need. So that's that's been going really well. Um, and some upcoming programs that I'm planning are on um, Violet's Crossing um, that is opening at Rockridge late, sometime late September. They're going to come on um, sometime. Um, we're looking in the March or April to come and do an information session here just let everybody know what they're going to be offering. And that is um, going to be um, moderate income, uh, brand new garden neighborhood for memory support. And right now they are taking um, applications, just preliminary applications. So this is residential, correct? It is. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, and I have a social, we have a social security presentation. Um, she'll be coming sometimes in March, I believe. Um, Patty and I are still going to be working out the details of the date for that. Um, people are uh, always ask for that. And they do a really good job. She was here um, a few months ago, I think three or four months ago she was here. Just from the social security office? Mm -hmm. Yes. Is that Sabrina? It's yeah. Sabrina, yep, yep. So she'll be here. Um, oh, and we are, um, we're having a hoarding presentation um, by Christopher Overtree. He's a University of Massachusetts um, faculty member. Um, I don't have a date for that yet, but we're, we're looking into that. And I think that's all I have written down for today. Anyone have any questions on the show? I was just going to add that um, Community Action's um, very happy that we collaborate with them for fuel assistance. Yes. Yeah. We've done a lot of, sorry, I didn't mean to leave that out. We've done a lot of fuel assistance. But not as much this year because the weather's been really warm. Mm -hmm. I expect a, a lot of people, more people to be calling come February and they realize that their oil or their wood is going down more. Mm -hmm. Last year, it was, the weather was so much colder that at the beginning of the season, we had a lot more people. So, but we'll, I think we'll, it's going to pick up for the fuel assistance. Okay, thank you very much for well, sharing. Global well, well, warming, I mean, Johnny's. Okay, we'll move on to finances, the FY16 budget. Everybody should have a copy. Personal services, there's 42000 just $436.92 for salaries. Um, and when it gets closer to May is when funds from our revolving accounts and our grants are transferred over to personal services to repay the city for our portion of the um, personnel here. And then OM, um, what we have left there is $6,913.91 to get us through to June 30th, which is the end of our fiscal year. So that's, that's what we have um, in terms of, if I could just jump to the next with the, uh, and if people have questions, I certainly can answer them. But um, the uh, budget for FY17, the mayor is going to be starting to uh, talk about that. And um, as a department, we need to provide to the finance director the fees that we charge. Um, every department would be doing that because it's going to be part of a, a document so we'll look at that years ago we used to do that um, I don't think we've done it lately so whatever our fees were or are we'll, we'll document that and get it to the mayor's office any questions any questions I didn't see oh no no I didn't see Go ahead. contractual services does that include the snow plowing and is there in does that as a one-time affair or is it a buy up? No, the um, snow plowing we that's not under our budget. Okay. That's under um, central services. 
or PPW. I'm not sure who's, but it's not in our it's budget. It's not in our budget. So, and, and as I had talked uh, before, we now have, there's a private contractor who comes here. And so far, one time, they had to come and you know, we'll work out the kinks with how that needs to get done. I just needed uh, some clarification. PIA and on the acronyms, PSOM, longevity. And oh, yep. Um, so PS is personal services, okay. so it's salaries. And then longevity is according to union contracts. Depending upon the number of years here, you receive uh, a, a, an amount of money okay. for a longevity. And then the OM is um, ordinary maintenance. It's um, our expenditures, okay. the different categories um, that we have. Thank you. Yep. And can I just say too, with Jerry Ann and Melissa, um, we can have a you know sit down so I can give you a tour. I know you probably know the building, but a tour and talk about a lot of the um, ins and outs of the budget and things like that and certainly anybody else who might want to come I can let you know when it is and um, there was a many times we have Emmett Schmarzo from the Department of Elder Affairs come here excuse me, and he does a workshop on being a board member so you know he's, he does that a couple times a year here so I'll try to see when he can come sooner than later but also to put um, and I didn't have an opportunity to get that done today for you but a booklet um, a packet of information about being a board member which all of you should have gotten um, when you became a board member that I put together I might add that that Emmett the gentleman is very good for the members yeah, about three years ago when I became a member he was invaluable I, I love him. he does it with a sense of humor it's just very very good I highly recommend attending. Yeah. Entertaining and informative. Yeah. And he, he right. is entertaining. You're right. And he makes okay. the bowl I'll go back right again nice. just to see it. Oh, okay. it. <laughs> it's not dull. Okay. Uh, director's report. Yes. Well, AARP taxes begin, you know, every year something always starts your year off and um, so AARP will be here doing taxes and starting on February 3rd. And how many um, are they giving us, um, how many slots can we fill per time? Five slots every 45 minutes. Okay, so that's that's a lot of people in the game. Um, so they've been here testing out the uh, Wi-Fi and, and hopefully everything just goes well. It's really a program that people come to take advantage of and get their taxes done and again it's for the simple taxes it's not if you have lots of um, securities or bonds or investments it's that's not the Jim's kind of taxes that you have <laughs> <laughs> um, so they'll be in the back room as they usually are but once the fitness center is there um, they'll be in the um, old fitness center with whatever we name that room uh, are we taking uh, appointments yet yeah, appointments are being taken and we also take people from other communities because a lot of the other um, offices like in Hatfield they don't do the ARP taxes anymore so more people um, venture to us um, an update on the signs um, Joanne and I met with um, the sign maker the sign out front will look really nice. It's going to be over in the corner here, you know, where the retention pond is. Then mm -hmm. uh, the slant. It will have um, Northampton Senior Center, 67 Con Street, and there will be a rotating, I don't know if that's the right word to use it, LED lights where uh, messages will go across. So, for instance, like the just because sale will go across, then it could be ARP taxes. And um, it can all be done with a smartphone, and nobody has to go out there and put letters in, <laughs> and just, uh, just jump over the snowbank. So that it will. It will do that anymore, not these days. Maybe. So that, that will happen, um, and that is being paid through the gift fund, our gift account fund, and um, it, it's going to look very nice, and I think people will be pleased with it. Uh, and then in the back, um, if you're walking to the building into the main entrance. 
<clears throat> over to the right hand side in the open area there will be a sign and it's just a flat sign that says Northampton Senior Center 67 Con Street and then above the door it'll say main entrance so that, that's, that's good and I think we were both very impressed with what he came up with for um, and diagrams yeah so they're also including you know terms of um, readability for aging eyes and stuff like that mm -hmm. yeah it's pretty big and the, the lettering um, on the top for Northampton Senior Center, so at night it would be white, you would see white lettering, and then the message that goes around with the LED lighting is um, red. So mm -hmm. it's very, very uh, bright. And we'll have to decide how long it's going to stay on and what impact it will have. Somewhat similar to the high school, then, uh, which has the uh, high school and then an LED signs. Yeah, it's, it's, it's similar to that. In, but, in that idea. Yeah, that one same idea. Move, though, Say that. No one does it move. No, it just flashes. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. right. It, it, uh, it, he said it rotates. Yeah. There's, there's different things. It can rotate or, you know, just like something and then flash something else and then flash something else. There's okay. different op options available. Okay. You so. can choose either one, any kind. Of From different. what we understand, yeah, you can okay. choose. When it comes down, you know, to the okay. very, very final thing. So. Okay, the vans. We've had a lot of publicity in the paper. I hope you all have seen it yeah. about the vans. Um, <coughs> so we had the Just Because sale, and the funding from that was going to go to, you know, the, the vans basically, we have the one from Capital Improvements, and then we did finally end up raising enough money for the second van. Um, so any well, I shouldn't say any, but a number of fundraisers that we're going to be doing are to support the transportation program because mm -hmm. you have vans, you need drivers, some of which will be paid, some will be um, volunteers, and then um, a dispatcher. So we're looking at the whole picture. Um, the, the vans um, hopefully can be ordered in, I don't know, another month and a half and be ready for spring. So that's the goal. It's finding, well, so far two of the three on the Plymouth State bid don't have what we're looking for. Um, so uh, New Hampshire, Hudson, New Hampshire has at least two different uh, dealerships that specialize in vans with cheerless on them. And, and again, I'm gonna, I keep using the word van, but it probably really should be called the bus. And it's not like the big buses that we all think about, like, that you know are 47 passengers it's not those kind of buses so um and people are like somebody uh, called me today and you know they want to contribute to the transportation program um, there was a wonderful editorial in the paper yesterday um, that was written about our transportation program and the necessity and Mary Lestowski was quoted in it um, as well as Saturday the uh, Gazette reporter and a photographer came and spent quite a bit of time here to interview and take pictures of our just because sale. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot of publicity. So. Do we know where East Hampton got their uh, vans? Just as another possibility where to order ours from? Yeah, they got it from New Hampshire as right. well. And the van that we um, took off the road um, was purchased from Hudson, New Hampshire as well. Now, do they come that way when you order them, or do you have to? Or a base vehicle and then they're retrofitted? Yes, you, you select what you want in the van. So there's so a they, lot of specific. From the outside appearance, and I know someone else made a comment, they look very good. Mm -hmm. They look very nice. And they're all, this, you know, the wheelchair accessible and all that. Yeah, when, when I, I just saw their new one just this week. They're, they call number two of the van. Yeah. Really yeah, so those are pretty similar because when uh, Linda Talbot from East Hampton purchased the one of the vans maybe two years ago yeah. um, that's what i used as criteria for what we might be looking for so yeah they look like something would be right up around yeah so that's mm -hmm. that's in the works one other yeah. question uh you received some grants in the past for transportation from uh highland valley Elder services are there any of these grants still operating the only grant for three oh we received transportation money out that no the only grant we have from Highland Valley right now is for $1,200 for medical transportation. So, so the other one's lapsed uh, out of the Yeah, we never, no. We, that was the only one that they um, funded. 
I was afraid of that, but uh, yeah. you know. So we'll look, look at other everything. places. But like that van, the other van that the East Hampton got through PDTA came through Massachusetts Rural Transportation. And I went online and, um, you know, there's a grant there that we can apply for and, and you know, have a third van if we got the grant. I also saw that they had a, um, something like a caravan or Voyager type thing, and they called it the shuttle. And that looked like a new vehicle as well, but certainly much smaller than right. the, the, the regular van, I guess, used to zip around back and forth. Somebody donated that. Yeah. I would assume so. Yeah. yeah would we so. uh, be required for every one of our vans to have a, uh, a wheelchair lift? No, I think like the shuttle you could have um, so just you could have for going. Building. And like we had that Dodge Caravan, which was donated to us in 2007, and we had a lot of use out of it, and we just, um, you know, took it off the road because it had a problem, um, and we were about to right. take it off the road, um, and <laughs> someone purchased that van yeah. for $650. So, my sense is, as long as you have an option of realtor or something that's accessible, yeah. fully accessible yeah. at times. So if we did get a third, yeah. we don't necessarily yeah. have to get yeah. the no, bigger, we get a shuttle yeah. Yeah. too. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I think that the encouraging thing is that we'll have a transportation program for getting people to and from the senior center to start. And, you know, that's been something that really has lapsed for us. And, you know, if you don't have vehicles, you can't transport people. And, and part of the going towards the fund would be the gas, right? Yeah, so there's gas and maintenance um, and then, you know, the personnel. Um, we need a dispatcher of some kind to handle calls and, and insurance. to adjust. Insurance. Yep. There's a new ruling on chauffeur's license and what they cover and what they don't cover. So we need to look into that. And do the fact is that we are picking people up and tracking them. The new, you may have to maintain a class, what's it, A chauffeur's license or class C mm -hmm. chauffeur's license. We haven't in the past had to. I know, but that that's just changed. Like it just changed. The yeah, state just, just changed the rules. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll check out. Yeah, you can look into that. Yeah. Just so we don't get yelled at back when we need it. Yeah. I, I haven't heard there. that through MCOA or um, Department of Elder Affairs yet, so but I'll I'll check on it. Well, I have a chauffeur's license, and they called me and said I had to change it. Have you taken tests and all that stuff? Well, you can be our volunteer. No. <laughs> well, we're not taking the test. No. <laughs> want to be in compliance, for yeah. sure. Jim's only spending 40 hours a week here now, so right <laughs> yeah. now, to kind of keep us out of that. Um, so I did mention about the Just Because sale, and just a little brief history about it. It was um, started because when we had that crack in the cupola, excuse me, um, and we had to shut down immediately, and it was just, it was in November, so we couldn't have our craft fair, we couldn't have the gift shop. All, Mary Meadow and her uh, daughter-in-law, Susan, set that whole thing up. We had a lot of merchandise. We come back into the building after um, Christmas and we have all this merchandise. So it was like, well, we need to have a sale. So just because that's mm -hmm. the sale. Um, but I think you know, we made about $866 in the three days with the Just Because sale, which, you know, okay, that's money we didn't have, that's great. And I'm going to say it wasn't a lot of work to put that thing together because we didn't have a lot of merchandise left from the craft festival and marketplace because we did so well at that. Um, we sold a lot of stuff. So um, I think in the future we aren't going to have the just because sale because we have that mini sale table, which is outstanding. So Mary uh, Lestowski takes care of that, and people continue to give us do donations, I'm going to say daily, between the books and that. So um, we probably don't really need to do the just because sale. It'll be sad to sometimes you got to retire mm -hmm. some of your programs, and that will be one of them. Back to return of the just because yeah. sale. Just you know, so we, we still have items on sale um, out there. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I do thank the volunteers who helped do the whole just because sale, um, marking things and setting it up. And, of course, to Mary, who really does a lot with that merchandise that we get, but also Bob Kais, who, um, you know, is so wonderful to keep setting up tables and taking them down. Mm -hmm. and, and then to the staff, too, because, you know, we have all of our daily um, responsibilities and our direct service to seniors but we have to put all these other things in so it all just works nicely well, so it was a nice sale we were having, happy having just moved and i'm trying to put two households together in one apartment 
We got some stuff piling up. <laughs> well, my daughter has to look over the person. Yeah, I know. We love stuff here, don't we? And anything Mary? she doesn't want. <laughs> Yeah, we do. Patty, yes. getting back to this, the van and transportation, do you have a separate account for it? Yeah, we do. We, okay. Yeah, that was established a while ago when we had any kind of transportation. And I sh yeah. as you're saying, I should add that the vans will be used to do trips so that, you know, people want to plan a trip, excuse me, <clears throat> plan a trip to Tanglewood or it can still, the vans can be used for that as well. Mm -hmm. um, and. And then, you know, once everything gets really established, does it mean that we would be able to say, oh, yeah, we'll bring you to the hairdresser, or you want to go to the church, okay? Um, I think to start with, we really want to get people to and from the senior center to programs and services. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we get a lot of, uh, uh, when I was doing medical transportation, get a lot of requests for that sort of thing. Well, you're taking me here, could you bring me to the senior center sometime? Well, we didn't have that place, but they said it was coming. So there's a lot of interest in it, a lot of people who don't have a car, and uh, they'd like to come down. Okay. Um, just to bring you update, uh, updated on the benefits counseling program, um, the program, actually the grant is being uh, canceled by the city the uh, mayor is going to sever that um, contract so as of February 5th um, we are no longer involved with benefits counseling so the pilot program will not exist here so that's and um, Crystal and I will meet to figure out where we're going to put all the pieces what we have to give back to MCOA um, who is the um, organization that gave us the grant for a three-year grant so basically it ends as of February 5th and there will be no year three um, never mind the whole year two so that's it's not going to happen we can blame Crystal leaving for it yeah, that's Same day. yeah we can we can blame Crystal for getting a wonderful wonderful benefits counseling right. program um, that has benefited a lot of people and there are 15 great volunteers who are highly professional and can carry that program so we're going to talk about what how things move along because it's not like okay we're all done with it there there are pieces that we need to put together so that it's not leaving people feeling abandoned yeah we're gonna speak to the funding source at MCOA to see if there's another senior center within the catchment area that will be willing to pick up the grant so MCOA is in the process of working on that currently we just found out today so there's a real nice house up on South Street that we're talking about. What is the reason? Kathy? And that's what I'm saying. What's the reason? Um, I, the, the letter just said that it was it, the letter going to the funding uh, source um, that it, as of February 5th it was done. And it, that's all I can tell you. So I say if you need to know more, the mayor has the answer. Because I don't. So. The mayor did this about your info? Yeah. Not like I, I, I met the mayor and um, I'm trying to think of the last meeting. I think I had a meeting with him. And I have a monthly meeting with him, and it was um, discussing the program. And um, we were, we were just waiting to see what was going to happen with the position. Um, so this this is the outcome of it. So, so it, it and actually there's a. Crystal put together some statistics that will pass along, but it also has to go to MCOA, um, the funding source, uh, you know, really what what happened, how many people benefited, how many hundreds of dollars, um, I should Here say hundreds, like thousands. thousands of dollars people receive benefits for. So, wow. so you know, again, we don't want to abandon what has happened because right. pieces need to get moved along you know we're not just throwing our hands up and saying okay it's done we need to figure out we were where handling for a wide area anyway yeah, yeah. so yeah, if someone regional. else in that same area can take it they could keep it going if yeah if, if there's able someone who was able to do it yeah. Yeah. yeah so that's something we'll, well, good luck we'll work on yeah. so i'm sure the volunteers are going to be upset i put 30 hours of my volunteer time into that program yeah, yeah. just me yeah. So I don't know how many other people put in, but I know Melissa's in it also, but that's a lot of training that we got and now we're not going to use it. Yeah, anymore. all the volunteers really are trained and 
employed, like they're currently providing benefit counseling on their own. Um, so, and not that Chris and I have really, because we just got the, the letter this morning, uh, that the volunteers is were so vested in this, um, that how, how can they still utilize, so we need to figure that out. And, and to be working with the other, um, organizations that we are collaborating with yeah. um, so that it can move forward because minus uh, you know us having the grant we just because we're not administering the grant doesn't necessarily mean if another organization was administering the grant that we couldn't provide a space for benefit counseling to happen in this mm -hmm. building um, we are just not going to be administering the grant MCOA is still continuing on with the pilot program mm -hmm. and if they have another organization that's willing to pick up the administration aspect as far as hiring the benefit counseling manager who will train and work with the, the volunteers. Does, does it have to be a, a COA? It doesn't have to be a COA. The other location is Berkshire Elder Services, so it's yeah, an ASAP. Um, Highland Valley. Yeah, Highland Valley could be approached, another senior center could be approached. So there's three. Um, Franklin County Home Care administers the program for Franklin County mm -hmm. and Berkshire Elder Services, which is the aging service access mm -hmm. point for Berkshire County, administers it for the Berkshire region. And we were the administering it for um, this area, Hampshire and some of Hampton County. Mm -hmm. so, so I was just gonna add, so I mean, I think we can be thankful and feel blessed that the grant that the mayor approved the grant for you know this period of time and you know a lot of beneficial um, pieces came out of it that a lot of people were served mm -hmm. so I and mean, we can look at that as a positive avenue yeah, for yeah. what did yeah. happen yeah. 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 there's a possibility to be able to arrange to keep it going yeah. not with yourself so yeah that's, that's good yeah and i told mcoa um because I just talked to Mary Kay briefly, because um, I wasn't sure when she got the letter, if she got it before us or not, um, at MCOA, and she said that um, this is just the bump in the road that they're still moving forward um, with the pilot program, and that the Executive Office of Elder Affairs is very interested in this pilot program, that they are interested in funding it going forward. They want every community to have this program so it's going to be picked up on a state level for funding is what she's thinking based on the interest of the executive office of elder affairs so the pilot program is just, we're not doing it but Berkshire is part of that pilot program and the other places that you said they're, they're part of the pilot yeah, as well and we yeah. were one of that the pilot pieces yeah we were a pilot site yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we were a pilot site, and um, Berkshire Elder Services is the pilot site, and Franklin County Home Care was our mentor because they have funding from the United Way that they um, that they use to implement this program for Franklin County, and they have for over the, the past five years. So it's a successful program, and they are our mentor agency in Franklin County. And um, it's a very valuable program. I mean, there's so many oh people God. you talk to, especially elderly yeah. people, who have no idea what's out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, could I get something? Well, I, I, I don't think I can get anything. It's also yeah. changing, you know, we're, we're going to say it's like you have to be right there. Yeah. And, and programs like you said, they change so fast. And just having a poster about something or a brochure about it's it not. really is not enough because people read it, they don't understand it, they don't figure, they can't figure out how it pertains to them and their financial mm -hmm. situation in all the hoops that you have to jump through. It's more like the program should actually be called Benefit Counseling, Application Assistance, and Advocacy. Because it's not just providing the benefit counseling, then doing the application. There's a whole advocacy piece to it from the SNAP and public benefit aspect that the volunteers are also right. having to do. So we'll get you um, all the statistics out. Um, have to that Crystal already has done that, so we'll get we'll make sure you get that just so you know that the impact that it had on um, people. And if you need, uh, you know, through my, you know, uh, being on, uh, on Highland Valley for, you know. Well, if you want to let them know, I will. That it's the opportunity. If they're interested, um, I can let Massachusetts Councils on Aging know that they're interested. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and um, so our annual health and safety fair will be coming um, in um, May 12th from 10 to 2 here. It's one of the biggest events other than the craft festival marketplace that happens in this building. We usually have um, 64, 65 vendors here um, in the lobby in the great room and we're expecting, I mean, we there are many vendors that we can't even have, when I say vendors, exhibitors who have something to do with um, a senior opportunity. Um, or, May 12th. Yes, it's a Thursday. Is it 10 to 2? 10 to 2, yeah. The, the exhibitors, the vendors start coming in at about, um, I don't know, yeah, even a I think it was to set up. So it, it is, the whole purpose of it was, Every, we always get asked to have all these people in the building so they can tell you about their program or their service or their health care benefits, whatever. And so I started so everything could be under one roof and it's a way to say, why don't you come to the health and safety fair? Um, and there's a $35 fee to have a table and um, it does, you know, pay for itself. But it's a great event and we will be giving volunteers. So, you know, put that date down. And yeah, the Mary's Bistro will be open, so that in the coffee shop obviously will be open. And Barbara, I'm sure, will be sitting there to get the Clark Savings Bank. Yeah. Um, and speaking of, yeah. we start a new year, so anybody that has a Florence Savings Bank account can fill in your ballot today. All right. Mm -hmm. yeah, they're at the front counter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't forget. And while you're there, you can buy a bag of M&M's. <laughs> <laughs> How many times can I do a bar for a So, yeah, that's, that, that's what I have for my report. You're adding to the day. Okay, any yeah. questions yeah. or comments <laughs> on the uh, report? Okay, let's move on then to building and grounds. Yes, um, so quite a bit has happened in the building um, since our last meeting. We had on December 23rd the mayoral roundtable where all the uh, former mayors um, came and it was just a really very nice event. Uh, it was taped by uh, NCTV. I haven't seen it yet on the station. I don't know if anybody has. Yeah. But it was really. It, was, um, it came out pretty good. Uh, you know, uh, former Mayor Musanti, Higgins, Ford, and Chapman. If any of you remember, was Chapman. <laughs> oh, wow. So it was. It was. It was very nice. Um, and then January fourth, we have the inaugural <laughs> ceremony here. Pam Powers, the clerk for the council, uh, organized that. So there were a lot of people in the building. Um, and nice to see the city councilors getting yes, sworn in. The cigarettes. Um, <laughs> first night was here um, again. Um, they're here, I'm trying to think, either they've been here three or four years now. Um, and performances here in the great room were from 12 to 6. And and everything went well. The building monitor said it was just very festive and everybody, you know, seemed happy. Um, and uh, some nice performances in there. It was interesting that I saw and met probably 10 elderly, we'll say, that said, this is here. Mm -hmm. You know, what, like, the, senior building? the senior center, yeah. Yeah, yeah actually, going yeah. like, okay, let me show you what happens here. It took a couple seconds to, <laughs> it was fascinating. That, Elderly people came and didn't know that the senior center yeah. was here. Well, I don't. I don't think we try to keep it a secret. I know. With <laughs> all that Joanne does with the newspapers and all the uh, yeah. senior notes, and and you know, speaking of that, there was a woman I talked to today. She said, you know, I've lived in Northampton forever, and she today was the first day she ever came in here. Wow. Yeah, I was she was old. Yeah. So. <laughs> a lot of folks don't want to admit it. Yeah. 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 Right. I don't, don't want to admit it. I think that's true. The yes. senior sure. center in a lot of people's yeah. minds are those old yeah. people. It's the old people. They don't want to deal with the old people. Yeah, that's right. Have the events like the first night. That's your local. Voting. Any event that brings yeah. in people who are not right. necessarily seniors, you know, yeah, but anyone in here so they can look it over and see that we have this place. Mm -hmm. A lot of people say senior center, it's not a country center. What do you do down there? Yeah. Well, yeah. Plus, you know, drive down and get a parking lot. Walk in. It's a city hall. Yeah. 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 We don't want people here. And so, therefore, come on in. The more people we have come in for other events, they will see these things. So I did say to the woman, I said, oh, do you get the Constantry Crown? And she says, yes, I read it all the time, and I should go to that and that, and it's, but, you know, today was the first day she was here. Yeah. <laughs> so, but that's good. And, um, 
you know, Joanne's always, I think we all as a staff, but Joanne, because that's, you know, the, the focus of her job is to get the word out. And so, you know, I think it's just keep telling people what we're doing and, you know, we're not trying to exclude anyone. We want people to be here. We want people to take advantage of um, all the opportunities that we have. Uh, chorus will begin next Tuesday, so it'll be nice to have them back and they'll be here on Tuesday nights until May. Um, so those are all their rehearsals. Campaign and political finance was here today having a meeting in the great room um, for city and town clerks. And um, you may have read in the paper, World War II mm. Club had a mm -hmm. um, water break. And last week they um, called to see if we had room in our freezer for their items that they had in their freezer or walk in. And so they brought things over. So we're, we are storing that for them until they can move it back. Mm -hmm. And, oh, excuse me. Um, they had their veterans luncheon here on, on um, Wednesday, so yesterday that was here because they couldn't use the uh, main room um, over there. So, you know, we try to, you know, as I said to the reporter, you know, we, we're neighbors and, you know, we need to help yeah. each other out. We can be flexible enough. Well, they've been very good to us in the past, yeah. letting us use their parking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Savvy and Sunday events, yeah. and weekend yeah. events. Yeah, and then when we didn't have the senior center, we had programming. There. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it all it all okay. works. So, just wanted you to bring bring an update on that. So that's that's what I had for building and grounds. Um, so yeah, the the um, private contractor first time for that snowstorm. Um, you know, we just have a few kinks to work out with that. Um, but otherwise, the building is sound and <laughs> and working. Any and questions or uh, comments? Uh, Okay, well, shall we move on to old business? So an update on the fitness center on uh, tomorrow, January 15th. All the um, proposals that, that I had sent out requests for um, quotes for the fitness equipment um, are due. And then from there, we can hire a vendor. And, um, you know, I just hope that they can meet all the, the needs that we had in our quote, which would be the seven new pieces of equipment, moving all the equipment down to the back room, um, having a uh, warm-up area, so we're, tomorrow I'll know what's happening. Did you find a replacement person? No. 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 So the, in terms of the fitness assistant, I don't have a replacement yet for the afternoon. Um, I believe Human Resources re-advertised it. Yeah. So it says, NCOA, no, it says NSS, meaning Northampton Senior Services Assistant, and then it says Fitness Center, because that job description is for Fitness Center or any other um, positions. <laughs> so, um, so, no, we haven't. And Sean's been putting in a lot of extra hours because we have a lot of people doing orientations. So. Now, in a couple of conversations the other day, we came, the ladies came up with something for the bathroom in the, uh, a problem they, they thought, for the bathroom in the uh, new fitness center. Uh, they thought there should be a chair in there they could sit down and uh, help them dress and undress. Yeah. But because of, and Jim brought up the fact that because of the handicapped access, sure. you have a chair in there, a wheelchair can't get in. I thought possibly a big enough on the wall. That's on my list of it having, is. yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, you know, it, it, I don't know if you took a look at Bob said, but you can get um, seats, and I have one um, when I had a bathroom when my father moved in that was a wheel-in shower, mm -hmm. and the bench, you could move it down and move it back up mm -hmm. so it wasn't in the way. And so that's that's the kind of uh, bench that we're talking about. So you have to have a good wall to be able to you know, secure it in. Yeah. But I, I've gotten in the suggestion box um, before that people would like um, seats in the um, various bathrooms and we can't do that because you need to have the access for a wheelchair to be able to yeah. rotate right. so we haven't been able to do that yeah. so it was to look at those kinds of things Good. So. I'm surprised nobody brought up the shower <sighs> no there's no we haven't heard anything Barbara so, <laughs> <laughs> so shut up Barbara <laughs> I think everybody is, <laughs> including the two people who forced the city hall to uh, have Bob come in early so they could shower. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm just going to say about, um, you know, when we chose to 
include a fitness center here in the plans. It wasn't to be like a real full force senior fitness center like when you go over to Northampton Athletic or any of those. It wasn't intended to be to like sweat. that. You don't sweat. Well, right? no, I know a lot of people do sweat here, um, to, you know, because they really, really exercise. So, um, you know, we don't encourage people to be um, perspiring and going out in cold weather, but you know, there's people need to make considerations for themselves. I sweat a lot, and I just bring a change of clothes. It, it's yeah. having a place to change yeah. clothes. And that's one of the benefits of the new things, the new uh, fitness centers. It has all back to the back there. Mm -hmm. So and it's much larger. And, and so it would be comfortable to do that. Right. Whereas in the stalls here, it's a little less yeah, comfortable. I use the handicap ones over there because I yeah, need yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just as a side note, I toured the uh, new Westfield oh. Senior Center a month ago uh, during their open house. And they have a rather large, what they call the fitness room. Was going to have one of those. Uh, it's all mirrored on one wall, and one of those dance bars going yeah. across. Yeah. A wooden floor. It was huge. It was bright. And I would say maybe one and a half times that we were there. Mm -hmm. And I said, "Oh, but you're brand new. Where's your equipment?" You know, I put any equipment in. It. It's just for programs, just for yoga and dance. And I said, "Are you kidding me?" I said, "That's one of our most popular oh, yeah. programs here." You know, once it got going. Yeah. I said, I can't believe that. And he said, no, we're not going with equipment. Yeah. They did build a senior center with extra rooms that yeah. they're not using. Yeah. And she smart. said, if we have more requests for that, we probably will make one or two of those rooms upstairs a, a workout room. Mm -hmm. But I guess their theory is they have a couple of uh, young men's and boys clubs and YMCA's and things all around the area. Yeah. And I said, it's still not the same when you're a senior and you want to yeah. go, you know, you don't want to go with maybe a younger population and all that. And I mean, these are all low-impact machines that we have in here, so yeah. we don't have the, the straining and grunting and groaning and lifting. I mean, I've worked out a lot of places in the city, and this is by far uh, much more conducive, much more comfortable, I would think, mm -hmm. for seniors than any of the big places. Mm -hmm. What's their building look like? It's beautiful. Gorgeous. It's gorgeous. It's yeah, really it's brand new. They have a big great room. Uh, I, I got an exclusive tour of the kitchen. <laughs> of course. When I want to see right away, and, uh, they serve lunch right out of the kitchen. Every day. I mean, they, they serve a lunch program, uh -huh. very inexpensive. I think two dollars, <coughs> and then they have lunch out of the middle school. Did I tell you? Yeah, they yeah, yeah for a dollar. Yeah. And we go have a school. I guess it's a school lunch for seniors after the school kids get through. So and it was neat as a board member and as somebody that's really interested here and participate. See what those senior centers do. Yep. And what they offer right. and, 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 their, and what they have available. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was really, really neat. My next, my gentleman, for my wife and I, is to go see Holyoke. I haven't seen oh, that one yet. Yeah. And they say that was really nice. Holyoke, Agawam, and Chicopee are three um, others yep. that people should go look at. Yeah. I haven't been to all Wasn't of those. Wasn't it Agawam, the fellow we seen the other day? Yes, yeah. Emil Cote. Yeah. That looks huge. Holyoke is because they have a room for shot. model yeah. trains. They have oh, yeah? a full room and people take a bunch of guys and a couple ladies meet probably once every two weeks yeah. and they have an actual train room full set up. Oh. Really kind of nice. Okay. Yeah. Mm. But thank you for your comments about our fitness center. Yeah. Yeah. It's very popular. Yeah. I, I think they're going to regret it. I really do. Mm -hmm. I think they're, they're gonna, people are going to want that. Jerry, did you have? Yeah, I just have a comment about the handicapped bathrooms there. I, I don't know who decided to put the sink on one side and the towel racks on the other side. Hmm. It's just a very, you got, you got, you wet the floor. Yeah. I just think of it as being dangerous. Just yeah. a comment that if those towel racks could be closer to the sink, it would yeah. be a lot safer, I think. Yeah. When they installed those, that's, that's right. how it was done. And we have gradually, but not all, and thank you for bringing that to my attention, were moved because <clears throat> that's exactly what was happening. So it was really the um, contractor who kind of did that. Yeah, so, but they also the will we'll get those moves. Yeah. Like because we did move a lot of them, uh -huh. but there are still many, as you mentioned. Yeah. 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 And I did send an email. We, um, many of you know Anthony that was here before mm -hmm. as the afternoon fitness center assistant. And he came to us from Brantford Hall when he was going to school um, at Brantford Hall. He came to us to do his internship through us. So I sent an email to Brentford Hall yesterday 
mm. letting them know that we had an afternoon fitness center assistant oh, position yeah, and good. that um, if they had any students who'd be interested in either a paid internship or an entry level position that they could refer them to us because that's basically oh, that's what, what Anthony yeah. used this for <laughs> was an entry level position <laughs> yep. now he's on to bigger and better personal training experiences for private people and but that's yeah, unfortunate because of our salary structure. It's, uh, we went seven months. So I'm not trained. Okay, anything uh, else you have comments on the uh, fitness center move? No, I don't. Okay. Uh, the veterans, seniors, yep. veterans textbook health program. So this is the third year that um, the mayor's program for seniors and veterans to receive um, an abatement with their taxes. So um, this year, the third year, um, it's one thousand dollars off of taxes um, with um, one hundred and eight hours needing to be served to work between January first and October thirty first. Um, and minimum wage went up, so it's at $10 an hour. So again, it's $108. Uh, there were 16 seniors who have applied for um, five veterans that have applied. So I've been interviewing, and some, um, in, some participants have already been placed. And hopefully within the next two weeks, all, all the participants have been placed. And there's a total of 20 slots available for seniors and 10 for veterans. So, and you, have, you have to have a certain income to qualify for a small for those. Yeah, it's income eligible, um, at least in Northampton. Every community that does this tax work up program has different criteria. The so veterans don't have a tax. Veterans, you don't correct. have an income level for veterans. Yeah. Veterans uh, do not need to have any income eligibility. They automatically qualify as a veteran. And for the income for seniors, if they change it to be um, people with a good neighbor energy. Right, so this year, the way that um, people, become, you have to look at the number of people in your household, and here's the, um, the minimum and the maximum within that. And it's based on the good energy, um, good neighbor energy program. And because that gets updated every year, and that's what the what is being used to look at the tax workout program, so that it's it, it's updated because it is for the state, and we'll we'll have that. So, so little bits and pieces of the program get revised each year, but this again is the, the third year that the mayor has instituted the tax workout program. Okay. Any questions or? Under the silent auction. Yeah, so we have some items we've gathered, but there's a lot to doing a silent auction. And I did mention that I was looking for um, maybe two people to coordinate that. And so I'm just putting that out there again. <laughs> At the silent auction it would be great to have. Um, and, and I'll leave it at that. <laughs> See me. Anything other? Or do we have a volunteer for the silent option? Yeah. I didn't hear one. Okay. Could be in silence. Yeah. <laughs> Very good, John. Okay, moving on to new business. Turkey to the fundraiser. Yeah. So, so a lot of these are, um, are new programs that we're trying out. Excuse me, the um, Turkey Dinner is a fundraiser for the transportation program, and mm -hmm. Care One is um, providing all of the food and the preparation of the food. Um, so that will be here on um, January 27th, and it's open to anybody who wants to come. It's uh, $10 for a turkey dinner. Um, it'll be served from 12 to 1.30 in the great room. We need volunteers for that? Or? Yeah, we will need volunteers for that. What day? Okay. Uh, 20, so 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. We're going. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's also down under announcements. It's on there. Uh, so we're co-sponsoring a blood drive with the Red Cross. It's going to be over at World War II Club, and I did check to make sure it was still going to happen with the you know the way the earth pipes burst. So it is happening. It's on Monday. We already um, have all the volunteers that we need 
to check people in and to serve refreshments, but um, the Red Cross looks to get 60 pints of, at least 60 pints of blood. So if you typically give blood or you never have and you want to think about it, um, Monday would be the perfect day to do it. And you can either sign up in advance or walk in. Yeah, and you get a five dollar Dunkin' Donuts gift card. Isn't there an age limit? No. 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 To donating blood? No. You, you, no, you might have to be at least eighteen. Yeah. 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 And I think you made that. Yeah. <laughs> just Minimum barber. I think you called. <laughs> I think I called. Just barely. Oh, So two things that we're starting. Um, Actually, the Tai Chi classes, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, quarter three to quarter four, are free to Northampton seniors. And it started with four people, and it just keeps building. And you know, we anticipate a lot of people coming to that. So um, we're excited that more and more people are interested in it. And then we're starting, um, at least on January 26th, the Tea Time Tuesdays, um, where it's just to come in and Sort of, I'm going to say relax and share. Is it tea. similar to cup the conversation? It is, but it's going to be much more elegant. <laughs> oh, fancy tea. <laughs> fancy tea. Fancy tea. Fancy tea. It's really going to be tea. They're going to have tea and refreshment. Yeah, tea and coffee because a lot of people don't drink tea, but we have our tea cups that we've been collecting for a long time. Beautiful, beautiful tea cups and um, probably tablecloths. Um, do you want to get a lot of fun? Do you think for something like that? I don't know what you mean, but I somebody gave me some really pretty teapots. If you would like them for that to keep forever, I mean, you yeah. can have them. Yeah, I guess I mean, it, yeah. yeah. That, that's a nice offer. Um, I, I mean, we could steep um, some tea. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah. yeah. I mean, these are nice teapots. Someone um, gave them to me, but I've got enough teapots. So. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, I'm sure the really those things. Yeah. Um, so that's happening. So if you know you want to just take the time out of your busy day, come to. Yeah, we also would love it if somebody wanted to kind of coordinate that whole program. So if you want to be the volunteer t Tuesday tea time facilitator, please see me before February 5th. <laughs> So, so anyway, Jim, it, it's similar to a cup of conversation, but there'll be, um, you know, good you have conversation. have to get dressed up with hats and everything No, else. but you can if you'd like. <laughs> with your gloves. Yeah. We're hoping to do it every Tuesday. Every Tuesday. Yeah. Um, and maybe someday there'll be a high tea. High tea. Then yeah. we would, that would be look fun. at having that would be dress nice. up. Yeah. 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 Well, a cup of conversation, I go. Bob does too, an awful lot, and it's really a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it it's always it catches me up on what's happening around town that's not in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh. The subjects uh, I imagine I feel the same way. The subjects range from anything you can think of, and a lot of that, as I say, well, all of a sudden we were in the bathrooms, and, and why there's no seats in the bathroom in the, in the women's bathrooms? And I said I don't think they're allowed in, in public bathrooms, and it turns out they weren't. So then we get into this whole seating business. So, <laughs> a lot of things come up. Pasta donuts. Pasta <laughs> donuts. Well, we get donut holes. From, yeah. uh, donut Shay brings donut holes. She has somebody gives her a box of donut holes every every time, so she brings donut holes in. Not as elegant as tea time, but uh, we're working on it. And of course, the uh, tea time Tuesdays is open to both male and female. And I'm going to get too many men. So. You never know. Um, and then I've already talked about the fourth annual health and safety fair, um, and, and that's a lot of preparation um, to get it to be happening. And then that day, there's a lot of work to it as well. So there'll be a variety of um, jobs to do at that. Okay. Um, so one other thing, um, just so you'll know that um, I'm going to be retiring on, yeah, on July 6th of this year. Wow. No. Oh, no. So no. You, you, no. You're hearing it first from me right now, and um, when we finish, I'll be I'm sending a letter July to 7th. the mayor's office. So oh, I'm here. Oh, so, no. uh, so there's a lot to do, and it'll stay forth. I'm just going to say it's been wonderful. I've been with the city since, um, oh, God. oh, I think November of 1978. As, wow. a, as a registrar and then a clerk of the registrar mm -hmm. and 
been here oh. since 2001. So that's all I'm going to say right now until you get my letter. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. I, I know my Irishman will be very glad to get that. Let's not go there. Oh, uh, and then just lastly, I, I have a letter that Crystal mm -hmm. and I both Big wrote card. that I would like to have you have, and you're all welcome to read it. Um, and it just um, no. everybody can read it. Oh. It's just that it, the situation had occurred, and we just wanted to set the record straight. Okay, uh, okay. see what we got here in the business announcements, because we got the, the blood drive, the uh, World War II club, there. turkey dinner, fundraiser, Valentine's Day pancake breakfast on Friday, February the 12th, 8.30 to 10. Uh, good breakfast as far as I know. Uh, is there a charge on that or is that free? The pancake breakfast, yeah, there's a charge. We haven't really determined a okay. charge. I don't remember what we did last year. First and I do want to encourage everybody who can attend the meeting to give Joanne a call and to attend as many meetings as possible. We have a great big showing today. And we want to keep that up. The more people we have, the more ideas we have, the more inputs and comments we have, the better we are. We are. Okay, anyone want to make a motion? Can I make that kind of statement first? Oh, yes. I would like to put some time in for the next meeting. I have invited the director of the uh, Council on Aging in Miami mm -hmm. to come up and talk about the book fair that they do and inviting all the, the book people. So put them in the public session. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So Jim, can you get me that person's name? Yep, I will get you all the information for her so you know, she gets a nice you know, first we'll class treatment and Joanne's going right on the agenda. Yep. She's yep. coming in February from Miami. Yep. She nuts. She's nuts. She's I loves me. Here. She loves me. Here. She must. Oh my Anybody God. Anybody got a motion to adjourn? Uh, I'll make a motion. I just want to make, oh, oh, make people aware of uh, Jim Spencer's photography work in the hallway in case you have a it. Uh, uh, it is absolutely yeah, it's great. Yeah. I was blown away looking at it. Oh, I tell Jim all the time it's National Geographic quality. Um, one of his, he sold one of his photographs out there to a magazine. Uh, it's going to be on the cover. Yeah. It's just beautiful work. It is. Jim, thanks. And Jim, when is your class going to be at the Forbes Library? The class is January, uh, February 2017. 2017. Right. We have the whole month. Um, and we've also, yes. Um, made the first cutoff for the Boston Med uh, the display. So we're down to the last 200 or 100, I guess that we made. They had 2,000 people put stuff in, and we made the we made the first cut. So I'm kind of excited about all my people. Yeah, it takes well, a very valuable program to this uh, institution. Thank you. Thank you very much for your hard work. Anyone want to make that motion? Not yet. I'd just like to say, obviously, Jim passed out one oh, of the little um, postcards. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be very nice if uh, we, as board members, went to try to support this for him and, have and, free and always uh, mm -hmm. yeah. and bring a friend and bring a friend and bring yeah. a friend. Can I give more of those? Jim? Excuse me. All right. Yeah, I give you one. And a good. I give one. You get one beer. You get one beer. Little one, not a big one. I don't want to cause any problems with anybody's wife. <laughs> my husband. You get to meet my husband. wife. Because she will be there collecting money. They won't let me have it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just um, yes. uh, for in the future, um, uh, anything going to be happening for St. Patrick's Day? Um, somebody asked, uh, Barbara asked me that question. Um, I know we have a few glitches because of people being away. Yes, so that's forth. true. So, um, the, well, the consensus is, but you let's, let me throw it out. Do you feel that people would still come to corn beef and cabbage after St. Patrick's Absolutely. Day? Absolutely. Certainly. Absolutely. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. then it yeah. will happen. Um, what day is St. Patrick's Day? On the no Saturday the 19th. Which would be the day before, the parade. it's still St. Patrick's time. Yeah. It's the day before the parade. I was thinking lunch or dinner. We had it at lunchtime, which lunch I think worked out much better than trying to get people to come out at yeah. night. Right. Yeah. Because right. people will be going to, if it's the day before the parade, people will be going to stuff 
that night, you know, like there's the bishop's mass, there's all that yeah. stuff that people yeah. are really so we have to do. Yeah. Would be like yeah, so better off with lunch. Yeah. 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 And um, as a member of the St. Patrick's Association, they um, announced the Marshall last Diggins. Saturday and uh, Pat Diggins. Yeah. 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 And the two Brennan Award winners are Brenda and Jim Ryan. <coughs> Oh, oh okay. Nice. So I mean, obviously, Pat's from. They're, they're, I guess that's all Florence, considered yeah, Florence. Right, right. And on the other end, Sue Doran got an award for the Holyoke Parade. Oh, I saw and she that. was in the. I, I, yeah, I, I, I didn't yeah. know what did. Oh, she got a. What's it? It's some award it begins with G. Um, I forget the name of the award, but she got some award. And of course, Michael Hearn is the president yeah, that's right. of the Holyoke right. St. Patrick's Day oh, Parade. Yeah. So I mean, they really pulled, uh, yeah, pulled that people. Yeah, 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 Mike. Yeah. 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 Do you want to announce the date of the St. Patrick's Day dinner? The, yeah, it's Saturday, the, is it the 27th or the 28th? The last February. Saturday of February. February. And I understand we just had a venue change <laughs> because of the fact of who the recipients are. It was originally going to be at the Alex. Oh, it's not there now? No, it just had to get changed. Not with Diggins and the Ryans. No, they no, got no, friends no. and family all over the place. So, so we're, we're back at the church. Okay, yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah. And it's not sold, so. Oh, yeah, we're at the church. And what's really funny is. I'll be on Saturday. He hasn't called me. No, no, no. Seth is going to do it at the church. Yeah. But what's really funny yeah. is. Yeah, that's, uh, Pat Diggins is very <laughs> instrumental when we do stuff at the church. Right. So it's a good thing Seth is doing it because Pat couldn't. Okay. So I'm, I'm hoping for our luncheon that you yeah. know, the usual suspects are still helping. So when is the dinner? John, 27th or 28th? 27th. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were volunteering. So when is, this will be on March? 19th. Um, 19th. We know that one. Yeah. 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 No, St. Joseph's. Yeah. Yeah. I know yeah. that. Yeah. But um, two days after. Is the 27th. Is the 7th. And what's going to happen then? That's the lunch. Great. It's the 20th. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, can we have a motion to adjourn or do we have more business? March 19th. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second, Mary. All those in favor? Yeah.